let's draw the picture of our floor plan once again. So the question that you have to ask yourself as a computer scientist is what data do you need to best represent the thing that you want to build? And here, what I've chosen to do is to represent this floor plan as a list of lines. So there's a line that starts here and ends here. There's a line that starts here and ends here. There's a line that starts here and ends here, and so on. Each one of these lines is part of the data that represents the entire floor plan. So once you decide that you're going to represent it as a list of lines, the question is, what is a line? How do you represent that? Well, a line is best represented as two points. So there's a point right here, I'll call it P1. And there's a point right here, I can call it P2. So a line is a pair of points. So a floor plan is a list of lines, and a line is a pair of points. And then what is a point? A point is a pair of numbers. So now that we've reduced our floor plan down into um, a, a simpler data type, we're ready to start writing some code. So let's look now at the code. Here's the code that I wrote for points. And here's the code I wrote for lines, which I actually called a cut, um, just because that's what it feels like you're doing when you're dividing, you're cutting the dungeon into two pieces, and then you cut those two pieces into two other pieces. So you're always adding a cut. Um, so I just decided to call it cut to remind myself about what I'm actually doing with it. So I'll start using the word cut. So points and cuts, or lines. And this is where we start doing some object-oriented programming. You can even see the word object right here. So the first thing this function does is it makes a variable called point, which is a new object. Now a new object is like an empty container. It's got nothing in it. But now the code says, hey, this object is going to have something called x and something called y. So the point, the point, the empty object that we just created, which I'll draw like this, had nothing in it until we put something called x into it, and then we put something called y into it. And the thing we put into it is whatever gets passed into this function. So maybe the numbers 3 and 7 got passed in. Well, then x would be 3, and y would be 7. And then we put one more thing into it. We actually put a function called toString, which is this code right here, which just returns a string that displays the point in a nice way, the way that you're probably used to displaying it. So if this, if we called the toString method on this, it would look like this, 3, 7, kind of like what you're used to from geometry. So this is what the object kind of looks like if you wrote it in JavaScript. This is what it'll print out if we ever call the toString method. Anytime you call this function right here, it's going to give you back a new point. So it returns this point. And in object-oriented programming, anytime you have something that gives you back a new object, that is called a constructor. So we have this constructor function that gives us back a new point object that we can then use in our code. And similarly, similarly we have 
the same kind of thing going on here for cuts. We have a cut constructor. And this one is actually very similar looking, only now what you pass in to the function are points instead of numbers. And what you get back is a cut instead of a point.